Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And welcome to this pre-recorded service of worship for Belmont Presbyterian Church for Sunday the 17th of January 2021. My name is Nigel Craig and I'm the minister here in this church. Let us worship God. Romans chapter 8, 33 to 34. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us? We pray together. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong, a perfect plea. A great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is written on his hands. My name is hidden in his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no power can force me to depart. When Satan tempts me to despair, and tells me of the guilt within. Upward I look and see him there who made an end of all my sin. Because the sinless Saviour died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me. Behold him there, the risen Lamb, my perfect sinless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am the King of glory and of grace. One with my Lord I cannot die. My soul is purchased by his blood. My life is safe with Christ on high, with Christ my Saviour and my God. Father, we approach you today, bothered by our sin and burdened by life's concerns. Through Christ your Son, our Mediator, please forgive us and deliver us. Indeed, shine your face upon us and be gracious to us. And in this time of worship, by your word and by your spirit, remind us of who you are and who we are in Christ, in whose wonderful name we pray. Amen. Our reading today is from Psalm number four. Psalm number four. Let us hear the word of God. To the choir master with stringed instruments, a psalm of David. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. O men, how long shall my honour be turned into shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Ponder in your own hearts on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, who will show us some good? Lift up the light of your face upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. In peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining us for this part of the service, and I hope you're keeping well. A question for you. What is your nightly routine? What are the things that you do before you go to bed? I'm sure you visit the bathroom, 
and you wash your face, go to the toilet and give your teeth a good cleaning. I'm sure also you get changed into your pyjamas, something comfortable to sleep in. And maybe you have a little glass of water um, before you get into bed. And whenever you're in your bed, I really hope that mummy and daddy come and they open the Bible or a Bible story book and read a story to you from the Bible and they also pray with you or that you pray yourself. Some things you could pray for at the end of the day, you could look back and say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for taking care of me today. You could say, sorry, Lord Jesus, for the ways in which I have uh, spoken things that I shouldn't have or have done things wrong that I shouldn't have done wrong. Please forgive me. And then you could ask God by his Holy Spirit to be with you that night to keep you safe. And also you could pray for your family, for your friends, for people who are sick, for people who are lonely and sad, for people in hospitals or doctors and nurses. You could even remember people in our church who work there and of course uh, people across the world who are in need. Some things uh, for you to think about. What is your nightly routine? Today I'll be sharing some thoughts with the adults about what our nightly routine should be. And there's a lovely verse that I want to leave with you boys and girls. It's Psalm number four and verse eight. And this is a psalm and a verse that you could make a prayer as you go to bed tonight. Psalm four and eight. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Thank you for listening, boys and girls. God bless you. Let's pray to God and ask him for his help as we come to look at his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bow in your presence. May your word be our rule, your spirit our teacher, and your greater glory our supreme concern, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I've just asked the children what was there nightly or evening routine. What about you? What's your evening routine? Maybe a cup of Horlicks or a bowl of cereal whilst watching the evening news. No doubt letting the dog or the cat out into the garden to relieve himself. Locking the doors. Checking on the kids. Getting into your own nightwear. Brushing your teeth or even removing your teeth reading a little bit in bed, praying before turning out the light. Well, we all know that our usual evening routine can be significantly altered by difficult circumstances. So, for example, if you're recovering from an operation, your evening routine will be different. Or if you have some illness or weakness, if you're in hospital, or if you're bereaved, and anxious or if you're feeling under great pressure. Maybe some of you are working for the NHS and I know that members of our congregation some do or perhaps you have responsibility for an elderly relative. I know that some of you are teachers and you're under great pressure at this time or maybe others are just finding it so difficult homeschooling children. Some of you may have your own business and you're finding these days a great struggle or perhaps lockdown has exacerbated some relationship difficulty. So when it comes to getting into bed at night, perhaps you're exhausted and troubled. Maybe you're worried that you won't sleep. But most of us desperately want rest. We're not sure if we can rest because of that adrenaline pumping through our system. Today I would like us to consider Psalm number four. 
It's most likely written as a prayer to be sung by a choir at evening worship in the temple, accompanied by string instruments. You can see that in the title of the psalm. And whilst you mightn't be in much mood for singing at night time, you might like to incorporate this psalm or elements of this psalm into your nightly routine, even this evening or in this coming week, particularly if you're feeling stressed or sad. It's been pointed out that this psalm is very similar to Psalm number three in its contents and in its language. The two really seem to belong together. You may remember that the previous psalm was composed by King David who was heartbroken by the popular coup staged by his son Absalom, resulting in his flight from the city of Jerusalem. And when you read Psalm 4, it echoes the third Psalm's stress and sadness. If you look at verse 1 there, David talks about his distress, literally the tight corner that he found himself in. Verse 2, David engages in an imaginary conversation with his enemies who've turned the honour of his royal position into shame as they've rebelled against him and accused him falsely. No wonder he cries out, how long, how long? Understandably, David and his companions are angry. Verse 4, literally they're trembling with rage. And some may even been, have been despairing, as you see in verse 6. Who will show us some good? Who will get us out of this mess? So this is a psalm of stress and sadness. But how did David deal with that stress and sadness, particularly at night time? Supplication, scripture and sacrifice. There are a couple of things that David did in response to his sad sadness and to his stress. He supplicated or prayed to the Lord. He meditated on scripture, God's promises, and he offered up a sacrifice. Supplication. David prayed intelligently to the Lord. That is, he prayed aware of who God was and who he was in relation to God. In verse 1, David remembered God's record of the past. You have given me relief when I was in distress. And so, thinking of the past, David was reassured that God was gracious and that he hears prayer. We do well to ask ourselves, has God changed? Is he any less gracious today? Has he stopped hearing prayer? Is he fed up relieving his people in their distress? Now, we all know the answer to those questions is, of course not. Dale Ralph Davis was right whenever he said, Biblical prayer seems to ponder God a good deal more than we are prone to. In these verses, Davis also remembered who he was in relation to God. In addressing the Lord as the God of my righteousness, verse 1, David was affirming there that God was the righteous one. God was the one who would do what it was right, who would vindicate him against the charges of his opponents. Oregon, way back in the third century, looking at this psalm, argued that David wasn't saying, I am righteous, lest saying God of my righteousness should give birth to pride. But rather, David was confessing that God was his wisdom and righteousness. Further clarity is given to this in verse 3 when David says that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The word godly here is a translation of the Hebrew Hasidim, referring to those who are loved by their covenant Lord and love him in return. So can you see, regardless of what slander or lies David was facing, he took refuge in his relationship with the Lord, the one who had set him apart as his son and as his king. And in fact, David urged his friends and himself, verse 4, to ponder in your own hearts, on your beds, and be silent. So rather than them working themselves up 
At night time, shaking with anger, David urged his friends and himself, as he lay in his bed, to ponder in their hearts and to be silent. As I was saying earlier on, many of us find it difficult sleeping, particularly if we're stressed or sad. Now, it might be worries surrounding coronavirus that are keeping you awake at night, but maybe it's some difficulty with another person. Knowing myself, we all have to ask, where have I gone wrong in the breakdown of a relationship? But you know, there are occasions when in spite of our best intentions, we may be understood, misunderstood or misrepresented even by family members and so-called friends. And I'm not talking here even about the schemes of our enemies. And let's not forget our feelings of despair are often compounded by our own condemning consciences. So what are we to do? Well, David gives a great template here for response. He says, remember not only the Lord, but remember who you are in relation to the Lord. And that's why it's so important for us to meditate and to read the scriptures. To read and to meditate upon the scriptures, especially if we're troubled at night. Because as you open the scriptures, you're able to read that in Christ, trusting in Christ, we have forgiveness for our past wrongs. And even if other people aren't willing to forgive us, in Christ, we can be forgiven. We also have the assurance that although we mightn't have acted very righteously ourselves, that he is our righteousness and our wisdom and that we have full vindication in him. In fact, he said he sets apart the godly for himself. As Paul says in Romans chapter 8, and we read these words earlier on, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Davis puts it so well. If the Lord has said to us, don't be afraid, for I have redeemed you, I've called you by name, you are mine, why should we listen to the blabberings of our enemies or even the accusations of an overly sensitive conscience? That's why we need to supplicate the Lord, that is to pray to the Lord and to read the scriptures and to be still. F.B. Mayer put it beautifully, it is only in standing water that silt settles. What a great picture. When the water is still, the silt settles. In fact, I would add, it's only whenever the wind dies down that the dust settles. And so the scripture says, rather than being angry, be angry, but do not sin. Ponder in your own hearts on your beds and to be silent. So David here prays, there's supplication, he meditates on the word of God, the promises of God, there's scripture and then we also see sacrifice. Verse 5, offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Now, this is a rather interesting instruction that David gives here, both to himself and to his companions. After all, whenever David first composed these words, it was most likely that he was away from Jerusalem and therefore separated from the place where right sacrifices could be offered. Nevertheless, David was able to offer a sacrifice of praise from his heart and from his lips. Now, you know as well as I do, uh, reading the New Testament and particularly uh, parts of the Bible, such as the book of Hebrews, that we no longer need to offer blood sacrifices to God because Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, was the final sacrifice. Our sins have been dealt with. They have been atoned for on the cross. We're now reconciled to God through faith in Christ. But nevertheless, you read in the, the scriptures, both old and new, that we're called upon to offer a bloodless sacrifice of praise to our God. At the end of the day, as you look back, I think of how the Lord has given you relief in your distress. That's a good time to offer the evening sacrifice, the sacrifice of praise. 
Now, for some of you, it might mean getting out an old hymn book, reading or even quietly singing to yourself some familiar words. Or for those of you who have access to YouTube, maybe finding some Christian music there. The day thou gavest, Lord, is ended. The darkness falls at thy behest. To thee our morning hymns ascended. Thy praise shall sanctify our rest. And finally, sleep and safety. Last week you may remember that we considered how anxiety can rob us of sleep and how God may, if he wills, grant rest to his children. Well, David returns to that theme in verse 8. Here we read of two outward blessings the troubled David was pleased to record. Sleep and safety. If you look at verse 6, we hear a deliberate echo of the ironic blessing that we all know so well as Presbyterians. Lift up the light of your face upon us, O Lord. Do you remember the ironic blessing? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance or his face upon you and give you peace. David is able to sleep and to sleep in safety because he has peace. And you see that in verse 6. And then, of course, in verse 8, it refers to peace. Calvin said, never shall we obtain undisturbed peace and solid joy until the favour of God shines upon us. And of course, the favour of God shines upon us through Christ and trusting in Christ. So David's able to sing about and talk about peace, but also joy. Now, you've heard me correctly here. David, even though he was rejected by his own son, and many people in Israel had rebelled against his kingship, David could say that he felt more joy than farmers who brought in a bumper crop of wheat and grapes who were able to celebrate with bread and wine. Now, how is that possible? Again, we return to David's rock, solid confidence in his covenant Lord. And for those reasons, he was able to sleep and feel secure. Nicholas Ridley, who was the one-time Bishop of London, was condemned to death by burning at the stake for his reformed theology under the reign of Bloody Mary. John Fox, who had been ordained by Ridley, recounts the events of the night before the Bishop's execution. And of course he was executed along with Bishop Hugh Latimer in Oxford in, 18, or in 1555. Ridley gathered his friends together for supper and announced that the following day he would be married, showing himself to be as merry as ever, as Fox puts it. The marriage to which he was referring was the marriage supper of the Lamb. That is that future vision of the church as the bride and Christ as the groom, an image of his entry into heaven. Now Ridley saw that one of his guests was deeply upset and he said, quiet yourself. Though my breakfast be somewhat sharp and painful, yet I am sure my supper will be more pleasant and sweet. And whenever they rose from the table, his brother offered to stay all night with him. But he said to his brother, No, no, that you shall not. For I intend, God willing, to sleep as quietly tonight as ever I did. What is your nightly routine? Are you going to bed bothered by stress and by sadness? I wonder if you take a moment for supplication, for scripture and for sacrifice. That is for prayer, meditating in God's word and singing your evening praise to him. And as you do so, may the Lord's face shine upon you and may he give you peace and joy. 
leading to a good night's sleep. Safety. Charles Spurgeon, as ever, was spot on whenever he said, How many of our sleepless hours might be traced to our untrusting and disordered minds? They slumber sweetly, whom faith rocks to sleep. No pillow so soft as a promise, no cover so warm as an assured interest in Christ. Let us pray together. And I'm using words by John Spur by Charles Spurgeon as our prayer of response. O Lord, give us this calm repose on thee, that like David, we may lie down in peace and sleep each night while we live. And joyfully, may we lie down in the appointed season to sleep in death, to rest in God, securely in Jesus, accepted in the Beloved. And now our prayers of intercession. Heavenly Father, we know that for many people, this is a time of great stress and sadness. Today we pray for those who are working with the NHS. We pray for those who work in our care homes, for those who have responsibility for elderly relatives. We pray for family members, friends and members of this congregation who are unwell, those awaiting operations or treatment those recovering from operations, and indeed their relatives. We pray for those who are bereaved, lonely and anxious. We pray for teachers, boards of governors, parents, children and young people, and all the confusion over our education at this time. We pray for those who run their own businesses, and those concerned for their jobs or finances. We pray for our Prime Minister, for the Westminster Parliament, for our First and Deputy First Ministers, and the Northern Ireland Executive, who have some very difficult decisions to make in relation to health, education, finance and business. We pray for the United States of America, especially for the outgoing President Donald Trump and incoming President Joe Biden. We pray that that country would experience peace, equity, virtue and national reconciliation. We pray for those who are facing relational difficulties, perhaps exacerbated by this lockdown, and for those who feel unsafe in their own homes, those who are away from home, those who do not have homes, and those refugees fleeing from their homes. Pray for those who are oppressed for their faith in Christ, especially in Central Africa at this time. And we pray for this congregation. We pray for our Kirk Session and Committee, for Chris Steele, our Clerk of Session. We pray for our children's ministry under Hannah, Ali working in the office, the Reverend Chris Barron with his pastoral care here, and Peter with the music. We also pray that you would bless the Church in Ireland, especially the Presbyterian Church in Ireland. Our moderator, David Bruce, our clerk, Trevor Gribben, our college and principal, Gordon Campbell. And in a moment of silence, we bring before you those who are on our hearts at this time. And together we pray the words that Christ has taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining in uh, in this short act of worship uh, from Belmont Presbyterian Church. And indeed, um, I would invite you to uh, send to me any questions that you might have or any concerns. Um, please ring or email and I will try my very best to respond to you. And now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.